about ready to go live. Three, two, one. All right, good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to Hornet Highlight Series. This is our second episode, and I am so excited to be here this evening. This evening, I have an awesome, awesome guest, awesome man of God, and an awesome Hornet, uh, Mr. Norman Storman Oliver. Good evening, Storman, and welcome to the Hornet Highlight Series. I'm Frank Burton Jr., your host, and in this forum, we highlight Delaware State University's game changers. And when I tell you game changers, I mean a game changer. If you've seen the flyer that's gone out underneath his picture, as it would be in a dictionary, is the word in quotation, boss, B-A-U-S. I didn't say boss. I said a boss. This young man <laughs> is a boss. And, and, and I am so glad glad to have you on the uh, program this evening, uh, Storman. How are you, sir? Hey, thanks, Frank. I'm, I'm honored to be on here, especially when you talk about Hornets, because you know how much we love the Hornets, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so this is what we're going to do, Storm. Um, a lot of times when I go places and do things, people want to want me to send a resume and a whole nine. And my thing is, if I got to send you a resume to make people listen to me, then you really don't need to listen to me. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. And I want you to tell our viewers what you want them to know about you. Okay. Um, Norman, I'll, you know, it's funny, Frank, uh, I went to, Nor I went to Wilmington High, right? Yes, sir. Which was 90% black. Mm -hmm. Then we got busted out to Newark High School, 90% white. Yes, sir. That was a transition. We, um, it was kind of weird. Um, and what you don't know is actually, uh, my freshman year at Wilmington High, I was a starting quarterback. What? Uh -huh. Man, you ain't never told me that. I know you didn't see because you said you were going to say some stuff. So I have some stuff, you know. Okay, I mean? okay, okay. So we get out to Newark High School, and it was like night and day, man. It was calm as the N word. Uh, um, it, it was kind of sad because we seventeen years old, right? And yes. We, and we went from, you know, going to school, you know, at eight o'clock, so we could, we could get up at like seven, seven thirty, go to wash, shower, eat, sure. get on, get on. So now we got to get up like 5, 4.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you didn't eat, you know, whatever. And a lot of people just didn't flourish in the early years of DSA, especially people from our communities, you know. And I actually flourished in that system. Um, I, got into, I got into play production. Um, I got into acting. I was like the first Black uh King for the Elizabethan Rose. Elizabethan Rose, so you didn't know that. Yes, um, yes. Um, but but it was, what I will say, and I don't know who watches you, um, if if you're not, if you're just okay athletically, get into acting, man. It teaches you so much about life. And I didn't yes. realize that. Um, it teaches you, because believe it or not, Frank, I was kind of shy. And it what? helped me out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It helped me out immensely, man. It helped me out immensely. I started doing uh, TV shows at Newark High School. Start writing poetry. Um, BB Coker came down there. We started our black uh, first black student union at Newark High School. Um, Tanya Fro was the president. I was the first vice president. Um, so it was a lot of firsts at Newark High School. Um, we started a peer council. I was the president of that, dealing with racial issues. So it prepared me, believe it or not, by the time I got to Delaware State College. Now I'm with the university. Yes. And, and, and you know, uh, Storm, it's, it's crazy because we have a, a lot of parallels. We haven't talked a lot about our backgrounds, just know each other from college. But one of the things that you said is very impactful. I remember those years of busing because I went to Harlan Elementary School, which was a block away from my house in yep. North mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Burnett, which was the very first year. This was cutting edge. A big yeah. high rise, eight story middle school, man. Come on, what? I remember that was I remember. about right. That was about two blocks away from me. And then my first year, I went to PS Dupont. And then after that, the next year, it was mandatory busing, and they shipped us out to Brandywine. And I remember even in Coach Przicki's book, you know, I'm highlighted there talking about how much of a transition it was for us. I remember the newspaper, and I remember. Uh, going into on the bus and and not the not the white students it was the parents who yeah. were out there picketing and calling us names and throwing stuff at us. That's but, right. But but where you said you flourish in Newark, here's the thing: 
I flourished at Brandywine because I was an athlete. So the athlete were the conduits between the city folk and the suburban folk. That's right. So we had a lot of we had a lot of clout. And the other thing I want to say is I do remember your exploits and, and playwriting and, and doing plays because you might not remember this, but in 1985 you did a lot of stuff with uh, Dr. George Brazier. And I was in a couple of those plays. I actually was a manager, program manager of uh, uh, what was it, Three Little Pigs or something we did. And <laughs> so, right. so I remember all that, man. So I'm just, I am just so elated that you are on with us tonight. Um, let me just say this, and, and, and I want to ask you a, a couple more questions. Uh, so I wanted Storm to introduce some stuff because I knew he'd be uh, pretty humble when I knew he'd say you know, whatever he needed to say about what his passion was. But let me just tell you a little bit more about uh, this awesome man of God's exploits. Um, Storman is the is a pillar in the Delaware community. He is a leader in the city of Wilmington and the state of Delaware. And let me let me just have full disclosure right now for everybody's listening. Uh, and we've said this already. He's a former college classmate of mine and a proud Dela uh, uh, graduate of Delaware State College back then, now Delaware State University. We graduated both in 1985, where he was the SGA president. We talked about that a little bit. He may want to talk about that a little bit more, where he obtained a degree in social work. Storm has been elected uh, an elected official and has run for local, statewide, and national campaigns. Other organizations, um, both nonprofit and for-profit, have sought this man's guidance and leadership for growth and development. He's a proud member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, and he's, he currently serves on the DSU Boards of Directors, Sterling Bank, and he's active in the Wilmington Rotary Club and the Monday Club. He's also a prestigious member of the Delaware Afro-American Sports Hall of Fame. This guy just has all kind of attributes and all kind of things going on. One of the things that I do want to highlight before I ask you another question, Storm, is that he is the CEO of New HD Radio and the CEO of Solid Rock Building Contracting, LLC. Uh, and he does a little consulting, too. So I say all of that so you know who we work with. Y'all know Storm and maybe in one or two ways, especially with that Solid Rock. I see what you're doing in the community and I see what you're doing uh, over in South Bridge. So I am so super proud of you. Let me ask you this question. I want to pivot and I want to ask you this question, Storm. Um, tell our viewers um, a little bit about um, your wife, which I just got a chance to meet, and your kids and how important family is to you. Well, family, family is extremely important. Um, first of all, I was married for 20 years and my wife, my first wife passed away of breast cancer. I'm not sure if you remember, if you knew that. Uh, then I remarried uh, just this past November to a, young, a lovely young lady who's a pastor, senior pastor here um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, her name is T. Lynn Oliver. And you got a chance to talk to her. Yes, sir. Um, yes, I've been sir. I've been very very fortunate, Frank. I've been very very fortunate, um, and and like when you and I were talking, right? I said I always tell people, you know, they ask me this a lot. I'm saying it's God's will. I mean, you figure, man. You know, what's the odds of a guy growing up in Southbridge Projects, four hmm. brothers, four sisters, my mother raising us, and my mother died at a very young age at 54. I don't know if people knew that, you know. Yes. Uh, to but I think perseverance right and a guy told me the other day man he said luck is hard work luck Ooh. is hard work. and and i look at you and when you said i mean i don't want to divert but you know it's the truth right because we're talking and the things that you've accomplished and i've been following you and your ministry and um you and i were talking about your son uh i mean it's it's amazing man what what we're able to do. I mean, look at you as a young man, had a son and still flourished. Yes. Other people would have quit, yes. you know? Um, and first of all, I got to tell you, first of all, I'm proud to be a Hornet. I'm proud yes, of people like you. I'm proud of all of our friends when we get a chance because some, a lot of them have perished. Yes. You know, I look sure. at guys like um, Curtis Battle, Battle who pledged with me, Andy Porter who played basketball at Dell State, 
Yes. Dave Harrington, who was a pastor, yes. just passed away. So we 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 got to look at that. And just be very fortunate, and thank God that we're still here and doing and doing the stuff that we're doing. There's things that you're doing, man. You're touching lives. And I always say, I always tell you, right? I, like I tell my wife, like even when you minister, like you, some somebody's gonna hear you for the very first time. Yes, sir. You have no idea. You have no idea. So you got to always be on your game. You always got to do the best you can and don't take it for granted. It's the same. You got to take that same approach like you took on a football field. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. That's in my mind. You know what I mean? And, 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 and again, man, I'm very, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. And it's rock solid contracting. Yeah. Uh, I've been very, <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny you bring this stuff up, right? Cause some things you do and you got to walk out on faith. Yes, you're, sir. You're, you're a man of God, right? So yes, sir. Some things, man, I mean, because you have those moments people don't even know, and you can't, because you're so used to counseling and helping so many others, you, you know, they don't even know how to help you. Like, That's right. And, and you're human. But that's right. You, you know, I, I had some pastors on my TV show. I had Bishop Morton, mm -hmm. Morton yes. I had Bishop Weeks, and I had Dr. Bullock. And they yes. said something, um, Reverend Burton, and I never looked at it like this from a ministerial, right? Mm -hmm. He said, no, man, we got to preach, you know, every Sunday. We got have Bible study. We have prayer lines. We got preach funerals, weddings. We got gifted of different words. If we mess up one time, people are texting us. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. And you know this better than I. And they were saying stuff, man. It was like, man, like, and we got to do stuff in our own, in our lives. And I was like, wow, man. So I pay homage to you guys. Cause I, ne I'm going to send you that video. I never understood it. and never looked at it like that until they talked about it, yeah. you know? And so I'm sure that you can relate, you know? Yeah. I mean, cause you got kids, right? Yeah. So you, you got issues, right? But yeah. people don't look at you as a pastor. So I'm telling people who are watching this, like sometimes we got to pray for you guys too. Like you just lost a loved one. Yes, sir. You just lost a loved one. Yes, sir. And sometimes you need a, a, a shoulder to lean on, you know? Like people lean on you so much. So thank you for all the work you did. And I'm saying this in the humblest way, you Amen. know? Um, and I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you having this form yes. because we have, I, I mean, that's all the thing that you did with the, Guys, African American Sports Hall of Fame, you did an excellent job with those Thank guys. You. And I was hearing stuff that I just hadn't heard. <laughs> uh, but keep up the good work, man. Keep up the good work. Amen. Storm, let me say this. And because you just, and I love when we can sit down and just talk. Right. No dialogue, no frame. Uh, and we can just talk and crunch it up. Because one thing that I do want to highlight, what you said as far as being a pastor. I've been pastoring for 18 years, my wife and I. And I've been ministering for 24 years. And one of the things people don't understand, and you know, we've said and we've talked, we talked about the accomplishments outside of pastoring. I have a lot of accomplishments. I have right. I have letters and degrees before and after my name. The right. you know, pastoring. Here's the thing. In order to be a good pastor, you really got to love the people, Norm. Because when I say I've been pastoring for 18 years, that means that our, my kids were babies when we started. And the thing that people don't understand is that your kids sit amongst those people that you talked about that look for you to make that mistake. And they hear the people and yeah. they hear them talking about you. So you got to mm -hmm. be really strong and resilient that your kids don't grow up resenting the church right. because of all the shenanigans that we have to go through. And one of the things that you talked about, I just lost my mother um, uh, three days ago on Thursday. Right. And, right. Um, and so but. Storm, I'm telling you, we're always there. We're always hospital visits and praying. And don't get me wrong. I raise my hand for this. But I'm going to tell you what, Pat, people who want to be pastors, don't you raise your hand. If you ain't fit for the kingdom, you, you, you can't turn back. You cannot turn back. You got to you, you got to you got to do the plowing. You got to do the work, because even now, even in my grief and I'm I'm OK because I know where my mom is, but Storm. People don't let you get arrest. They still call on you. They still want you to Frank, do this. Frank, you're, you're, and do that. They don't care. Hey, Frank, but you're a human. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know, and, and, and you bleed like I bleed, right? You know what I mean? You got to go bathroom like I got to go. 
That's right. right. And, and sometimes they look at pastors and you, right, as, and I'm telling you, I just had the revelation having them on my show. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, you, you know, my phone rings off the hook. But okay. I'm so honored, right, to learn about that because these guys are my friends like you. Right. You know? And, like, which I mean, it's, you, I'm, I'm glad you're humble and, like you said, your mother's in a better place and all that. But, God, man, I, I you know, when my mother passed away, you know, I go visit, visit her gravesite for 20 years. And it was like, yes. wow. You know, it's it's like it's not easy, man. And people still want you to get up and give the word. And, yeah. You know, like like and you like yeah. look, man. I, you know, they're like, Pastor, we know what you're going through. Um, what are we doing this Sunday? <laughs> you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All, 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 the, all of these questions. Hey, Storm, right? I, I want to go, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna push pause because we we're at a place where we can really dig in. I want to go another okay. further with you right now, and I want to dig in just a little bit. With, we're talking we're about gonna, mothers. Hey, look, we, we, we in your living room, like Sunny Hill would say. That's right. So we whatever, in, we're in my living room. Yes, sir. Wherever, wherever you want to go, we're doing it. Yes, sir. So we're, we're talking about mothers, and, and a mother's love is incredible. I want, I want. so we're going to dig just a little bit. Um, I'm going to go another further and just dig just a little bit. Because, you know, you said you saw my other interviews. I, I always go back. So let me let me take you back and take our viewers back to when you were in the eighth grade. And when you and your younger brother, Alonzo, came around the corner in your neighborhood in South Bridge and you saw your mother on the street surrounded by all her belongings after getting evicted. Tell us how that made you feel and what you learned from that experience. You know, that's. Look at you doing your homework, man. Oh, man, I told you. Man, I'm a vet storm. You know, FBI, I'm an investigator, son. So, so Frank, that's that's funny, right? So I'm in eighth grade and Cisco's in the seventh. Yes. And so coming home from Bancroft School. So the real story is um, we we didn't have, we had nowhere to stay. Right. And so some, some activists just went and got a key from the house authority. And we just moved in the house like, wow. like it's our house. Right. Yes. And so we live in there like for four months. And so I guess it, so the lady who the housing authority house was, they give her the key. She comes like open the door, like, whoa, who are these people? Right? <laughs> like, this is my house, right? <laughs> like we chilling on Allen Court. Allen Court and South Bridge Projects. Right? Yes, sir. Uh so I mean the housing authority, like look. You can't stay here. You got to, <laughs> this is not your house. And so, I mean, it was a big thing. They were writing about it in the. See, back then, Frank, they had a morning paper and an evening paper. Yep, morning journal and the evening news journal. I That's remember. Right, right, right. So they 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 were writing about it. So some friends of ours, like Buckweed and Ty Bivens and Donald Hash, like yo, um, well, they call me Mark Wayne then, not Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my middle name, Mark Wayne. Mm-hmm. So. So my brother and I, like, we go out there, our furniture is outside. Go inside, my mother's laying on downstairs on a bed on the couch, like, ah, whatever, you know, the newspapers, TVs, like, they said, we're going to get through this. And you learned, you didn't know at that age what was going on. Right. So when you got older, you're like, wow, we actually were homeless. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So they put us out. Remember Lord Delaware Hotel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right on 13. Yeah. So me and, matter of fact, Dr. Tony Allen and I were talking about that two weeks ago. Wow. And that's a, that's a whole nother story. So wow. we stayed out We stayed out there for like a month. And they found us like a little scatter site to stay in for a couple of years. Then we moved back into South Bridge Projects. So to answer that question, I, I guess it was, I don't know if it was embarrassing or you just said no. Mm. You know, too young to know. Um, and because then fa- you talk about families, you know, we had a strong family by my aunts, uncles, grandparents. Yes. Right. So you didn't know that you didn't have. You didn't know. Right. right. And you had friends and my mother's friends. So everybody would pitch in and we never went without a meal. Right. We right. never went without clothes. We never missed the trip because right. we didn't know. We didn't right. know. You know, right. so all the things that were happening around us, it just happened. 
Mm. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and but 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 it goes back to what I was saying to you earlier. Luck comes from hard work. Wow. Wow. You know, look from hard work. And, and and like I said, it's God's will, man. Like, like those those are moments like that where people could quit, give up, go to, I mean, we could have been in a juvenile detention center. Mm-hmm. I mean, because that could take you off, right? You know, that's right. I mean, it was it was in the people was reading it in the paper. I mean, I got some of the articles. Right. People, I, I saved the articles. You know what I mean? People yeah. don't realize that. But but I think that it makes you stronger, but you don't Ooh. even realize that it makes you stronger. Right. Ooh, store. I mean, in eighth grade, in eighth yes. grade, come yes. on, man. Yes. <laughs> you know what you're gonna do. Wait, where are you gonna go though? Yeah, yeah. So, Storm, I asked you that because, I, and you you said it, and 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 from what you said in your answer, I really wanted to press upon a point about the word perseverance. That taught you how to persevere. Now, you know, I'm you know, I'm not acting in the capacity of a pastor tonight, but just a you know, we don't, I don't know. No, hey, 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 Frank, hey, Frank, let me tell you how we do this, right? When people uh-huh. interview me or I interview people, whatever mm-hmm. it is, it is, man. We don't, we don't, have to, we don't have to apologize. Yeah. We don't, you know, we're going to talk and we talk openly. It's no, it's, it is what it is. Don't, yes. So, don't so, so, right. Which, so, when, you, when, so when we speak about perseverance in Second Corinthians chapter 10, 13, it says, there's no temptation except what is common to man. And God is faithful that he would never give you more than your, you can bear. Wow. And when you are tempted, watch this. And when you are tempted, when you're persevering, when you're going through traumatic situations, when you're going through tests, the Bible says that he always makes a way of escape. So I wanted to say to you, not only from that experience at eight years old, you know, those are your developmental years, not only I, did you persevere. Like 12. I think about 12, 13. Okay. Not only did you persevere from that encounter, look at you now. You prevailed in life. And, and uh, okay, here we go again. I promise I'm going to get to the next question. <laughs> but Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 says, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, Storm, you're going to reap the harvest, but you can't faint. So many of us would have quit. Mm. I'm from Chester, Pennsylvania. So you from South Bridge. I understand it's a whole lot of people that I know quit, but That's because right. we didn't quit on life and because our mothers were strong and they gave us that example. Look at God, man. Look at God. Wow. Wow. Look at God. Look hey, at God. Hey, hey, I tell you what you preaching. Oh uh, man. I, I listen. I, I listen. It's Sunday night. I'm trying to get away from that. Listen. So I want to talk to you. I want to, I want to pivot now to entrepreneurship because that's huge to me. And, and, you know, you, you, talk to a lot of young brothers and a lot of young sisters. I don't want to work for nobody. I want, they have, they, it sounds good, but they don't have plans. So right. I, I want to say this to you. And, and this is the question out of everything that you were doing in your career. And we haven't even talked about the political spectrum, man, because you came out with a de- degree in social work, but man, you started hitting them. You started hitting the pavement with all kinds of politicians and doing all kinds of things and city council. But out of everything that you were doing in your career, how do you how did you get involved in entrepreneurship? Let me say this though, because it really intrigues me because this is what the viewers, everybody may not know, some who went to school with us would know, because I remember Storm, I remember your humble beginnings. I remember way back in Bell State, maybe 84, maybe even 83, but this was before 85, before we graduated. I remember that the football team. During the season, after after practice, all week long, you know, the cafeteria was shut down at a certain point, right? <laughs> uh, you remember that, right? Uh, and let me tell y'all what Storm did. I don't listen. I I think it, I forget what I think it was an acne down the street. Storm went down to this acne, bought packs of hot dogs, y'all. You hear me? <laughs> and this man every night around nine o'clock, ten o'clock, start selling hot dogs. Yo, those hot dogs was like crack, man. He was like, Storm, what's Storm? Storm, yo, yo, could I get a dog? He was selling hot dogs for 50 cents every night. And not only to the football players, everybody from all the dorms start coming over. And I said, this man is all, this man is onto something. And let me tell you, this is the part I remembered, Storm, that I, I didn't tell you about. I'm going to bring it back to your remembrance. That smile of yours, I don't know if you got that from your mama or whoever, <laughs> But that smile and that laugh is your signature. <laughs> and, and with that smile and laugh, I'm going to tell you, 
you started this you started this statement and I don't know if people still say it, but I remember I said it up until 2000. Whenever we saw you, whether we was dressed to impressed or whatever, we had nice kicks on or whatever, your favorite phrase to us, you give us that smile and you give us that laugh and you go, like that, like that. And I was like, <laughs> that's my dude. That was the like that, man. So anyway, <laughs> I say all that to say this. Talk to us about entrepreneurship and how did you get involved with it? Well, I think another good question, right? So I've always been that, you know, I don't know, you know, when you were younger, you had to go sell bird seeds and all that kind of stuff or yes. candy. I was always like the top seller, UNICEF for UNICEF, um, UNICEF thing, the UNICEF stuff, right? I was always going to door to door. I was always like do extra. Um, you know, again, it's, it's God. You, this you're bringing back a lot of memories, man. So I remember when like I went that? to when I was like that. Yeah, I see. So when I, actually, when I went to North High School, right. So we, as blacks, we would buy six packs of beers, um, cases or whatever, right. And the white guys would buy kegs. Oh man, yes, sir. And so I was like. You mean to tell me you spend forty dollars, you get forty dollars back when you bring the keg back? That's almost a wash, right? Yeah. So when I got to Dell State again <clears throat> with this experience, I started selling beers mm -hmm. in the hall mm -hmm. out of the keg, like yes. I, you know, for like a dollar. Now I'm telling all the illegal stuff, right? I was making money, but it was legal money. But I learned <laughs> entrepreneurship, right? Um, then I would sell hot dogs, like you said, and also, you, by the way, you may not also sold subs in the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because at night, 12 o'clock at night, these guys out partying. Yes, like, sir. I mean, you know, jokers doing whatever they're doing, but they they got the munchies. That's so, right. They want to get a grub. So I would I would be open from like 10 to like 2, because at some point I got to get some sleep. But like you said, yes. it's like crack. They still banging on doors. You know, I'm like, yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so I was when I got home, I mean I worked for the county executive, worked for the mayor, worked for attorney general, you know, I worked for pretty much everybody. I worked for the Wilmington Housing Authority, people sell them in. I always had a job. I always thought it was so my last job, I was working for Tom Gordon. I was yes. an executive administrative assistant or something, Frank. Making pretty good money. Mm -hmm. And I never forget, man, this is this is a crazy story. Uh, my son was in his second grade and I was working there. And it was a Wednesday, it was raining, I'll never forget. I, and I was making good money. I mean, good money as administrative assistant. Um, I said, I'm, I'm quitting immediately. I mean, I resigned. But, and I was on city council, I think, at that time. I think, whatever, yeah. I think I was city council, but city council wasn't paying a lot of money. Cut my computer off and I left. Wow. I said, I want, I want to go and start my own companies. You know, I want to do wow. my own thing. So this was, all, you're talking about fate, mm -hmm. right? Um, I got a $30,000 grant. I bought a building in South Bridge, got renovated. And, and I don't know if you remember back then, they was writing about me about everything. I was like, I thought I was John Dillinger, man. I was like, <laughs> like, I'm like a black dude trying to make $10. Like, I, was, yes, sir. I was broke, right? <laughs> you know, but then, like, I mean, you know, it's, I, you know, it's kind of it was kind of hard, right? Being a black in politics too, and I was rising quickly. Yeah, you know, so not only was I getting it from the whites, I was getting it more from the blacks, believe it or not. Yeah. and it was kind of weird, you know. And I mean, I know you get it. You, again, you a rising young black preacher, older black preacher, like, who's this guy? You know, you're yeah. like, man, I just I'm just trying to get a chance, man. I'm, I look up to you. I'm not trying to take your ministry, yes, you know, and I'm just. Assuming, right? I don't know. So I started Noor Enterprises and it was an educational firm because at that time, Frank, Stormy's Classic was hot. Stormy's yeah, Classic man. was I remember that. on fire. And mm -hmm. so, but what I was noticing, what, I, what happened with me, I made, I got to a point where I said, if they didn't come to tutoring an hour before the games, they couldn't play. Right, that's if awesome. They, if they didn't do a community service project, before the end of the year, the teams would get suspended. So I was doing all that kind of stuff. 
And I also realized that at alarming rates, alarming rates, black and brown kids were not getting it. I mean, they would get suspended from school. They were not academically sound. Right. Uh, I mean, because I did, I did some work at Ferris, you know, detention, the detention center. Yeah. I said, we got to do something about this. So Nor Enterprises, at one point, I had uh, most of the major contracts with the school system, you know, dealing with hard-to-reach youth and kids. Then I started a nonprofit, Our Youth, Inc. And because I'd always, I always feel like it's important to give back. Yeah. And I started to turkey drive, you know, giving out turkeys. Yes, sir. To homeless people. And I, I gave out like four, my mother cooked like four meals in 1980. Wow. And by 2018, before 19, before the pandemic, I was giving out 6,000 turkeys, which was really one of the biggest in the country. Um, and back to entrepreneurship, then I started rock solid contracting. And my goal was and my goal still is to be one of the premier black construction companies, not just in the state, but around the around, you know, region. People look yeah. up to. But it's yeah. hard work. It's hard work. Yeah. Um, because I, I felt, Frank, to be honest, like when it came to social, right? I've really accomplished stuff with the storm mm-hmm. class and the turkey drive, right? Mm-hmm. Politically, I was the first black chairman of the party. I ran Al Sharpton's campaign yep. in the city. Uh, Barack Obama's campaign, I was a surrogate. Um, I went to conventions in California and Boston. Now, and I was like, this economic piece, this is the monster. Wow. Because I, I feel like if we could really get into that game, especially black and brown people, like we could really change things. Like seeing people become first time home buyers. You know what I mean? Outstanding. Then yes. seeing a young, I mean, some of these guys have never had checking accounts, right? Right. And, and some of them want to shoot, I mean, but they don't know anything else. Wow. I mean, like, let's, let's start a trade. No. I, th- I think that the way out of, I mean, soon to be Bishop Beeman, Reverend Beeman had this conversation. I think poverty is one of the, one of the biggest ills in our community. Mm-hmm. And I think that, Brother Burton, that if we could get them out of that mindset, yes. stop putting real money in their pocket, where they can buy a house, a car, and feel good about themselves, that's self-esteem. Yeah, yeah. And Storm, you, you said something very interesting uh, when you were talking about the examples. And we already talked about coming from humble beginnings, uh, both of us. And we talked about the situation that you saw when your mother uh, when you were younger, you saw your mother. So that that all builds, uh, like I said, perseverance, but also character. So with that persever- perseverance and character, nobody can tell you who you are or what you can accomplish. So you, you said something that struck a chord with me because it was true. You say you don't know if it was true. I'm going to tell you, it was very true. When I started pastoring, I was 40 years old. So I'm relatively uh, older for most people would, would think. And the thing about my wife and I, you talking about the call of God, my wife and I, when we started, we had no pedigree, Storm. I wasn't third generation, Kojic, no, none of that. Nobody wow. in my family was a pastor. Nobody in my wife's uh, uh, family was a pastor. I know I got the call while on assignment with the FBI out in, um, out in um, Colorado. But here's the thing. Right. right. When I got the call and I accepted the call, you know, just like you, at, by right. then, I was like you, I was see men in a community. I knew people. So my thing was, I wanted to engage with other pastors. And I did. I went out to them and I introduced myself and you. Absolutely right, Storm. They looked at me and like, who? Where you come from? I don't know who you are. But here's the, here's the thing. This is the point I want somebody out there listening to. People can't define you. That's I right. didn't stop because they didn't accept me. I just continue to do what I know that God said and God elevated me to the mm. point two years later. And I'm not going, I don't do the name calling thing. You, I, you already know, cause I already told you, I started working with some worldwide pastors and then those same people that shunned me. Now they wanted to bring me into their fold. Mm. And, and but, 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 so let's, let's move to this one. So that speaks to leadership. And, and John Maxwell says this, and this is important. John Maxwell is the chief of leadership. He says, leadership is not power, Storm. He said, leadership, and you notice, because this is you, 
Leadership is influence. So if you got influence, I didn't worry about them shunning me because I knew I had influence. I knew God could send me out and talk to anybody, and not just as a pastor, but as an agent, but I also as a member of the community. So I was, I was three parts into this. So let me ask you this question. I want you to define what leadership is to you, and I want you to tell the viewers what leadership looks like to you. Hmm. Well, I think that, first of all, again, man, like I'm, I'm honored to, to talk to you because I like these kind of conversations, right? Leadership is earned. Mm. Um, and some people want to be leaders, but because you're biblical, you understand this, right? God doesn't make everyone leaders. Come on, come on. That's, that's why you have to be have some followers. Come on. And, and so people try sometimes to go out there and they're just not, because some people have to be followers, right? That's what makes the world. You know, that's why you have CEOs and you have people work for the company, right? That's why you have a pastor, you have people, members, because that's leadership. But what I will say, you can't be afraid. Come on, come you on. Can't be, you can't be afraid to, to lead, especially if it's your calling. Um, because, and also don't be afraid to fail. Come on, man. You know, I mean, I think um, Napoleon Hill um, talked about, you know, he fell seven times. Come on. Before you really, so I've had a liquor store, I mean, a bar, City yeah. Tap, at City Pizza, mm. at corner store, uh, transportation company, uh, nonprofit, for profit, you know, and all of them have been successful. Yes. Right? But it's where you end, not where you start. Yes. You know, but don't always look for a hand out, look for a hand up. And I think like James Brown said that in one of his songs. You know, you know, you now you got me singing, right? <laughs> but but also, Frank, I just think it's hard work, man. You gotta, you know, and you got and people gotta trust you. Come on. You know, I mean when we talk about leadership is starting storm is classic at 18 and guys playing in your league at 17. Wow. You're having people coaching. Wow. Leadership is having 54 young black guys in Southbridge and you in this circle in 1981 telling them, man, what you're going to do is going to be something phenomenal that I don't know what's going to happen, but I can feel it. I remember those conversations. That's right. From 54 kids in Southbridge, Barbara Hicks Park, yes. to 2,000, we have 2,000 kids up and down the state. You have a league in Sussex. I mean, Georgetown, Smyrna, Seaford, Dover, Smyrna, Newcastle, girls and boys, Elena Deladine, uh, 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 Rashi Rashan, I mean, Leron Prophet, yes. Leron Stephens, Jermaine Melly, all the guys you know. I mean, it's, it, it, was fun, it was phenomenal. And rubbing elbows with icons like Sonny Vaccaro, who he and I are good friends now. I was on the phone yesterday with John Carlos from the 1968 Olympics. That's another guy you should, you should yes. get on the iPod and I, and I set you guys up. Yes. I mean, it's, yes. it's, it's a phenomenal thing, Frank, when you are humble, when you're yes. humble, when you're prayerful, when you're thankful. Yes. And what I will say to anybody that try to stay, I mean, it's trying to stay as humble and understand it's not really about you. It's a bigger calling. I'm not really trying to get too deep. Yeah. Um, but I like entrepreneurship, man. But it's not easy. If you're not made up for it, don't do it. Because it's going to be some pitfalls. It's going to be on. some pitfalls. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm building five more townhomes. So this would be 15, five, or 22nd houses that we built in the city of Wilmington as a black. Um, we were like, I think we're one of the few blacks that ever built houses in the city of Wilmington. Right? And I didn't even to myself. I feel like I'm... Um, <laughs> Steve Wynn. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All, all, yeah. All of us wait one, two, three, right? Why not, right? I named the I'm housing, speaking of my mother. I mean, that's why I honored my mother with that first housing project called Xanthia's Way. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm, awesome. That's I'm awesome. Being listed being that. But it been also, man, if you had the power, know how to use it and don't give it up. Come on. If you so had the power, don't, don't give it up. That's right. Don't so start take it back. Yeah, so Storm, very quickly, when we talked about leadership, you said a couple of things. One thing, and you're right, everybody can't be a leader. And one of the worst things 
to see is a second man in the first man's chair. And that <laughs> second, come on, man, listen, he was, you, you want to be so, you, you want to be so high and mighty, man, you just mess everything up. And then the other thing is, <laughs> so for everything that you've been successful at, you know, you said you looked at my, my resume and the whole nine, but guess what? Success, I tell people all the time, success is really failure turned inside out. I've failed many more times than I've succeeded. The things That's that people right. see, the things that people see is my successes. But man, you, it's, it's uh, again about perseverance. It's about getting up and getting, uh, falling down and getting back up. But here's the thing, Storm. And I want you to educate people because you kind of touched this. Be careful what you ask for because you want to be a leader. And we talked about this a little bit before we came on. But there are some pros and there are some cons to stepping out into a leadership role. To whom much is given, much right. is required. Talk required. about that. Talk about that. You know, you know the old cliche, right? The guy who came in second mm. is the first, the first guy who lost. Yes. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Right? The, you know what I mean? Like when they say when you pray for rain, you got to deal with the mud. Yes, yes. Yes. You know I mean? So watch it. You know, and I, I was, you know, it's funny. I was, I was in New York and I was at this private club about four years ago and everybody was talking, right? Talking business, but it was kind of, so, and the guy said that, he said, always remember the guy who came in second was the first guy who lost. Mm. I had to stop everybody. I said, man, say that again. <laughs> you, think about, you think about a silver medalist, right? Yes. Which is, but he's the first one who lost. Mm. So you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy. And that's part of leadership. That's part of what you're doing. That's part of what you're bringing. When, I mean, like, when, and people look at this right here, right? They don't understand this work. Mm -hmm. you, know, you got to research what kind of questions you're going to ask, right? Yes, sir. You got to make sure the Zoom call is working. You got to make sure the phone is working, the, the voice level is okay. You know, like, no, I mean, that's work. Yes, and sir. that's above and beyond you preaching today or whatever. That's above and beyond family stuff. That's above and beyond dinner stuff. That's above and beyond calls you were taking. That's mm -hmm. leadership. Yeah, yes, sir. That's and, and leadership. It's, and it's also- you, you, it's not, you, 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 That's something that is in you. That's yes, something sir. that you can't, it, it is what it is. Yes, sir. You understand, and, I mean, you understand that, yeah. Yeah, and it's also preparation. And, and I tell, you know, my boys, we talked about it and I won't get into it here, but my boys are doing some great things right now. But I tell everybody, because I've been blessed to get a football scholarship and play baseball in college. And my boys have been blessed to play football in college at two universities, uh, Ball State and Virginia now at Delaware. I tell young athletes who I help get scholarships as well. I tell them, listen, when they, especially when they're young, like you, Storm, in, in the classics, when they're young, I say, listen, as a ball player, do you want to be a good ball player? And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, that's not good enough. Because if you want to be a great ball player, to be above and, above and beyond everybody, it's preparation and it's hard work. So you do have to do those things. You have to do those essential things that nobody else does. If you go to uh, college right now and see my son, Frank Burton III, practice after every practice, which was instilled in him when he was young, 12 years old, 13, 14, you'll see him sprinting like crazy after every practice. Not because anybody's asking him to do it, because he knows he wants to go to that next level. So Storm, as I begin to wind, I begin to wind down. I don't want to get into the weeds about that because you know how proud I am about my kids. I want you to speak uh, speak briefly about your kids, man, your babies. Tell me some of the things that they're doing. I know you're a proud daddy and all. Tell me some oh, of the yeah. things that, that they're doing and what you see for them doing in the, in the future. It's so funny, right? So I'm just talking to my daughter, who's a dental hygienist in Salisbury, Maryland. And she just told me that she just got a promotion. This conversation was yesterday. Wow. Um, and she's phenomenal. She's doing phenomenal stuff. Um, my son was a social producer at CBS for 60 Minutes and uh, Good Morning, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, CBS. He just got a um, promotion from producer at CBS. Mm -hmm. My son, Jermaine, uh, he works down the port um, and he's just doing some good stuff. And, you know, I mean, I'm blessed in so many ways, you know, I mean, I'm blessed above and beyond. And what I did want to say, man, um, I want to grant two students from your church uh, scholarship money. Um, 
I don't know if they're going to college, right? If they go to Dell State yeah. or University of Delaware, have them send me a letter. And um, I have I put some money with United Way, so I have scholarship money where they don't have to say I'm a 4.0 or 3.6. Blah, 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 blah. I'm the judge and jury, right? Amen. They send me a letter Amen. because of you. Ho, ho, because of you. I want to give two students from your church scholarship money if they go to wow. Delaware State or wherever wherever they want to go. And wow. and it's from me to you. I set up a scholarship fund with United Way. I've been doing it for about quietly. It's not quiet now because I'm on this iPod. <laughs> but because of the work that you're doing, the work that mm-hmm. you're doing, two students mm-hmm. from your church who are going to college will get scholarship money from me. Regardless of what college they go to, I hope they go to Dell State, but whatever school they go, to. but 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 it, it's going to be from Frank Burton, right? Your ministry through the Norman Oliver Scholarship Fund, and because okay. I'm proud, I'm proud of the work you're doing. I'm humbled, and I think that you're a phenomenal person. Yes. And I, I didn't have this reservation revelation before I came on the show, mm. but the more we talked, I, I just feel like it's a couple of students that need help. From your, your church. Um, and so that's that's where we at, okay? Amen, Storm. Let me tell you this, man. I do have a few students that are going to be going wow. to Dell State this year from our church. So that's just a blessing. Look, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you tonight, man. Is there anything else that you want our viewers to know, or is there anything else that I left out? No, I think we covered, we covered a lot, man. I just sure. think it's, I mean, first of all, man, I, I, I'm thankful every day to be able to had went to college, yes. you know, because I, mean? I was one of those guys that wasn't going to go. I, I mean, if it wasn't for Jethro Williams, mm. Leo Lacombe, guys like Dr. Mishu, Dr. Lyons, Dr. Weiner, I don't know where I would be today. That's that's the that's 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 it in a nutshell. Uh, my mother, you know. Uh, Dr. D- you know, Dean Daniels and those guys. I mean, I mean, you, where would where would you be? Where would we be? You know, they they gave us a, a second chance, man. When you talk about George Brazier and them, I start writing yes. poems. Just well, people don't know I wrote poems for the newspaper in the yearbook. You know, Both of us. Like, that's how I remember yeah. you because we. Right. I was on the, I was on the uh, newspaper staff in the yeah. yearbook. Yeah, I mean, um, Earth to Holly. You know, let me yes. do a one minute play. Yes. I mean, there's just so many stories, man. There's so many. I was the Hornet one year. I mean, uh, worked in this. <laughs> I mean, like we hustle, man. Like we, where else are you gonna go? You gonna yes. go back to Chester? Yeah. Where Where you gonna go? You You gotta do it, man. Frank, and look, look at you as a young man had a child, man, but you didn't quit. That's where right. are you gonna go? That's it. I mean, and 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 my wife said this. You know, it was it's those moments when you're by yourself praying. People don't know. Yeah. yeah, they see all this right here, right? They, you know, they see storming this that, but they don't know when we on our, on our quiet times. Yeah. You know what I mean? But keep on persevering, man, and thank you, and go Hornets, man, and Amen. I'm very, I'm very Amen. Proud of you, I can't wait to see you in the Hall of Fame. Amen, Storm. This is, wow. <laughs> this ends another exciting episode of Hornet Highlight Series, and I told you this man was a boss. Y'all, y'all have to give it up for him. So we're gonna give it up for Storm and Norman. Thank you, Stormy, for being our guest tonight. Um, I'm praying continued health and prosperity for you and your wife and your entire family, as well as our viewers. You guys have a, a, a peaceful and a blessed night. Again, Storm, thank you so very much. We appreciate you for everything that you do. Peace, thank you, man. sir. Thank you.